What's going on, beautiful people? It is I, your flying locomotive, and faster than a speeding bullet supercliff, coming at you live with a brand new video. And for today's majestic and fantastic video, we will be concluding this year's crisis with Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths, issue number 7. But before we jump into everything that is DC, Nightwing, and basically everything relating to the multiverse, if you are new to the channel, then smash that like and subscribe button. That way you guys never miss out on anything that happens on this majestic channel. And because you managed to cross over a thousand subs, let's raise the bar and go full on Super Saiyan as we try to get 40 more subs before the end of 2022. So yeah, don't be rude, it's free folks, it's the price of admission. Don't be a nerd, show some class. Hit that subscribe button. Thus, without further ado, let's dive into the finale, the saving of the DC Universe with Dark Crisis, issue number 7. Our story begins with two armies, one made of heroes and the other made of villains. And just like the DC Universe Online trailer from way back in the day, best cinematic trailer ever, the same thing is happening here. Heroes and villains are continuing to do battle and clash amongst the ruins of the Hall of Justice. Now remember folks, the number one objective here is that the heroes have to reach Deathstroke because once they do that, then the good guys can win and everyone gets to go home. And thus, while the battle is happening, we have Deathstroke holding down Ravager and Nightwing, where he's imbuing them with the power of darkness, basically as a way to, you know, enforce his nihilistic mindset of darkness into their minds. Basically, he's trying to corrupt them. And the reason why Slade is going full on evil here, because he thinks that the world is flawed, which it is, but, you know, I digress. Because due to his past experiences and the loss of his children, he believes that sort of stuff should never happen. No parents should have to bury that child. And so as a way of saving people the pain that he had to endure, it's why he's trying to destroy the multiverse in his own twisted way. He wants to save everyone. And so while everything is happening, the Flash family, you know, are racing to repair the connections between the old and new universes, Damien showing up with reinforcements from Earth Zero, including the Justice League Incarnate and Dr. Light, Black Adam himself, the changer to DC hierarchy, comes out of freaking nowhere and starts attacking Slade directly, whilst calling down the lightning at the same time. However, by doing so, this exercises the darkness from Slade. And so in turn, because of Black Adam's connection to the wizard Shazam, despite the fact that Dwayne Johnson hates Shazam and doesn't like to think that, you know, his character is connected to him, which is insane, but, you know, I digress. Well, that's exactly what's happening here. For there's a lot of Shazam to be had. Because once he does this, the power of Shazam distributes the power across the superheroes. In turn, making, making them all immune to the darkness. And from there, like an army of badasses, the heroes are able to defeat Deathstroke's army, and Dr. Light and the Flashes are able to heal the multiverse. From there, Deathstroke and Adam are now both powerless, and so they proceed to beat the shit out of each other. Whereas meanwhile, we have Nightwing, who is still trying to resist the influence from the darkness. And although Slade is able to overpower Black Adam, Dick is finally able to pass through the darkness, for he's able to escape it. And alas, Dick Grayson, Nightwing himself, is back, baby. And with that, we see the boy wonder finally subdued Deathstroke once and for all. And with Ravager being a daughter and trying to calm her father down, the world and the multiverse are eventually saved. Later on during the aftermath, we see that the heroes are rebuilding the Earth back to its proper self, whereas the majority of villains like Lex Luthor and, you know, those among the Legion make their escape. Hospitalized at the Hall of Justice, Deathstroke is left in a physical wreck, and we find out that the effects of the darkness and the way in which the darkness was removed from Slade, it's causing his enhancements to be stripped away. But on top of that, we also see a mysterious figure deactivate his life support, thus leaving Deathstroke, the Terminator, to die by himself. Now, when it comes to Black Adam, though he's a man who's extremely conservative, you know, when it comes to passing out compliments, prior to his departure, the man in black himself finally gives John the compliment that he's deserved, along with his undying respect. However, he does tell Superman to fuck off, so there's that. You know, <laughs> you take what you can get. And lastly, Batman tells Nightwing that the League is disbanding. However, it's not because, you know, anyone got into a fight or anything like that. Rather, it's what the heroes here have proven in their absence. Justice League members or not, there's always going to be heroes. And you don't need a private quarters or a Justice League chair or watchtower with your name on it to, you know, say otherwise. Because at the end of the day, every single one of us is a member of the Justice League. And so perhaps the Justice League isn't so much, you know, a team, but an idea, a philosophy, a culture, which of course, you know, no matter the circumstance, we should always do the right thing, for we should always be heroes. But wait, there's more folks, because later on we check in with a mysterious individual, someone who's conveniently cloaked in shadow. And this person 
is meeting with the mysterious Council of Light, and they're talking about the superheroes, specifically those among the Justice League, having essentially, you know, defeated death. And for something like that to happen, like, it just can't because it's way too much power. And so because of that, the Council of Light offer our mysterious person, that being Amanda Waller, the resources that she'll need to kill every single metahuman on Earth. Whether they're good or evil, metahumans are about to go extinct. And that, folks, was the end of Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths, issue number seven. And thank you guys for checking out my video, as it truly, truly means the world to me. So yeah, we finally did it, folks. We finally finished Dark Crisis. Now, here's the thing. I understand the complaints towards DC of late, you know, that being, of course, the stories don't matter anymore. Like, what's the point if the comics are just going to keep, you know, rebooting and keep doing events like Death Metal and Dark Crisis, like, or like an event called, you know, Up the Asshole, Upside Down Verse. What's the point of everything if we're just going to keep like rebooting and just doing major events after major events? However, I think if you pull all that bullshit to the side and just, you know, view this story as a story itself, then you might look at this event as a whole in a more positive manner. Joshua Williamson clearly, and I mean, clearly understands these characters and God damn it, do I trust the man? Essentially, this entire event is basically, you know, you know, not just a love letter to all the characters, but a love letter to comics in general. I'm sure Josh is aware of the critique that DC and events like Dark Crisis and, and his are having to contend with. And so when you look at the story itself, what the story tells us is that, yes, drama might be surrounding the company, but at the end of the day, people at DC want to write comics. They want to write good stories about great characters and people, whether or not we're sort of tired of the big event kind of syndrome we're having. At the end of the day, we still want to read about these characters because we love DC. Basically, if there's a will, then there's a way. And that spokesperson could very well be, you know, not only Nightwing, but everyone involved. The writers, the, the characters, the heroes, the villains, us, the readers, we're all involved in this. And so, you know, only we can really dictate how we take the DC universe moving forward. So yeah, overall, I liked it. I think Dark Crisis was a fun read, you know, but I will say this, you know, my only fear is that, you know, within a year's time, I don't want to see another death metal orgy event happen at least for another few years, like give it like, give it at least, at least 18 months. But hey, I'm going to look at this positively. I'm going to try and, you know, think positively going forward, but I can't help but feel that that's going to like, so like something like that, like death metal up the ass number two is going to happen. So I don't know. But, um, but yeah, as always, I'm your majestic sayer of words, Supercliff. And if you guys are new to the channel, then do me a solid by smashing that like and subscribe button and also the notification bell so that you'll never miss out on an upload so that you'll always be kept up to date with your favorite top tier comics happening in the comic book world. Now tell me, what are your thoughts and opinions on this issue? Are you guys excited for the future of DC? Let me know down in the comment section below. And until the next video, peace. Giggity goo.